Hey guys! So it's December and welcome back to Roman's Kitchen. Today I'll be teaching you how to make this lovely red sweet Moscato. So if you want to see how all this gets made from scratch Roma's Kitchen style, stick around right after this intro. So I'm going to start off by using 2 kilos of muscat grapes. You can use whatever grape that's available to you. And I'm going to be removing these grapes from the little stalks. And then I'm going to be adding them to a container. Then I'm going to be washing them really really well before I start to juice them. So here I'm just washing the grapes guys, you want to wash them really really well to get rid of any little thing that might be on the outside of the grapes. So just wash them really really well for a few minutes and then you just want to drain them and here they are nice and ready. So now I'm going to be adding my grapes to this container a little at a time and I'm going to be using my bare hand and I'm just going to be squeezing these together and basically juicing the grapes right now and you need to use your bare hands for this guys just to squeeze everything together until all you have is grape juice. Now guys these are muscat grapes which can give you red or white wine. If you remove the outer part of the grapes that you can see here these little dark purple or red the outer part if you remove those then you'll get white wine and if you keep them you'll get red wine so I need red wine so I'm leaving mine in and I'm just going to squeeze everything together until all my grapes are nice and juiced Now all my grapes have been juiced, now you need a container like this, either glass or a ceramic container and I'm going to be putting all of this in my container and as I said I'm not removing the outer part of the grapes because I need red wine but if you need white wine you can go ahead and remove those and you just want to add everything in this container. Now you want to clean as you go along guys because you do not want any this to attract any fruit flies or any flies at all if any bugs or any flies get into this guys this will no longer be wine it will turn into vinegar and you do not want that so just cover it as you go along and clean the surface as you are making your wine so not to attract any flies now for the spices guys for my wine I'm going to go in with with one cinnamon stick next I'm going to be adding four cardamoms and then I'm going to go in with six cloves and as you put those in you want to cover it again then I'm going to be working on my yeast and my water now the yeast is what will help this to ferment and I'm going to add a third cup of warm water to this little container here and then to this third cup of warm water I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of dry yeast and this is just regular baking yeast. Now I'm just going to mix this all up until it's nice and dissolved then I'm just going to rest this to the side for it to start doing its thing then I work on some other things for my wine. So now I'm going to be adding to my wine 5 cups of sugar. I do not like dry wine guys, I like my wine sweet. 
so i'm just going to add five cups of sugar to this and at the end of the process the wine wasn't really really sweet but it was not dry so after getting all this sugar in the five cups of sugar in total and moving it around a little i'm going to be adding the yeast so after adding the yeast i'm going to be stirring this up some more again and then i'm going to cover my container now this is it it's nice and covered and i'm going to be leaving this for 24 hours in a dark place and then i'll show you what it looks like okay guys so this is day one and this here will happen every day up to the 15th day so you want to stir your wine every single day to ensure that some oxygen gets in and also that everything is nice and together the yeast and the pulp and everything that's up top can get down to the bottom so the fermenting process can take place and i like the color that it has now but i want it to be darker so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this one large beetroot that I have. I'm going to be washing it and I'm going to be shredding it. Then I'm going to be actually extracting the juice and I'm going to add it to my mixture. So this is my beetroot guys, nice and shredded. I have some cheesecloth here and I'm going to be adding the roots to it. And I'm going to be squeezing it to remove the red juice. Now the beetroot, it won't add to the flavor. It won't take away from the flavor but it will give it this nice red color so the beet is perfect for this now that we're done with this guys i'm going to be popping this open and you see these bubbles this is what you're supposed to see for 15 days straight guys once you see this you know that it is nice and fermenting it is turning into wine so i'm going to give this a nice little mix and then i'm going to be adding the red beetroot juice to this just to get it nice give it a nice color i love to see these bubbles guys once you see these bubbles you know something is going on now I think my container has a little too much so I'm going to be removing some of this juice from my container just because it's too small so if you have a bigger container go ahead and use it so I'm going to remove some of the, the, the grape juice that's in there then I'm going to be adding all the red beet juice. so this is it i'm just going to clean my container now i'm going to cover it ensure that it's nice and sealed and i'm going to cover it again with the other part and i'm going to put this in a dark place for 24 hours and i'll come back and stir it again now guys this is what you want to see every day these bubbles so now on day eight guys this is what it looks like it's nice and fermenting you see all those bubbling taking place and that's exactly what you want to see up to day 15 now on day 15 guys there are no bubbles nothing is happening so that's a sign that the pulp needs to be removed from all this mixture the pulp and the outer part of the grape the grape covering all those need to be removed so what I'm going to do is I have a container here. I'm going to just add a strainer over this container and I'm going to ensure that I juice all this. So I'm running this through my strainer and you want to use your hand to ensure that you get as much of the wine out as possible. 
then you're going to actually throw away discard off the pulp and as you can see the outer part of the grape it's no longer that dark red or purple color because all that color is in the wine I'm running it again through a cheesecloth and a strainer to get as much out as possible And guys, on this day, day 15, this is good to go. This tasted so well. It's filled with liquor. Unfortunately, I was unable to measure the alcohol volume, but I'm telling you, this is nice and strong. You can use this to bake on day 15, but I'm leaving it for a while longer because the longer you leave it, the stronger it will get. So that's good to go now guys what you want to do now is add this back to your container which you should have washed so after adding this back to your container what you'll notice is it doesn't have that nice strong red color so don't mind that guys you're now going to just cover this and leave it to sit in a dark place still do not touch this do not move it you want this to clear naturally you do not need to add any clearing pills or anything like that to your wine. I'm going to be leaving it in a nice place, still no touching, for another 15 days. So guys, on day 30, this is it. It has settled and it has cleared naturally. It can clear even more if you leave it for longer. But today, I'm actually going to transfer some of this to my wine bottle. And then I'm going to leave the rest in this container for as long as I can to make it get even stronger. And I'll be using this to bake, I'll be drinking this, all of that. So guys, you want to go in this with something that won't really disturb the settlement at the bottom. You know what's at anything that's at the bottom? You don't want to move the container around too much. So this is it in my nice Roma's Kitchen wine bottle. And now I'm going to be pouring you guys a glass. And this is some red sweet Moscato, okay? This is sweet red Moscato made Roma's Kitchen style. You can serve this chilled. You can have this as is. But guys, this is lovely. I'm so proud of this outcome. And I'll be making wine every single year from now on so guys let me know in the comment section if you enjoy this video if you did don't forget to like this video don't forget to share this video don't forget to subscribe to roma's kitchen for more great recipes and turn your post notifications on until next video